afternoon. We are ready to start and I'm glad to greet all our participants today on our Neurosoft Neurofeedback webinar. Our plan for today contains all these points. First of all, our medical consultant will tell us about methodological aspects of biofeedback and neurofeedback trainings. After that, I'll show you possibilities of neuronspectrum.net software for neurofeedback trainings technique. Uh, then we will make a short uh, workshop where we will demonstrate how this technique work on real patient with a real condition. And uh, after that, we will have a questions and discussion session. So uh, now we will start with your feedback training theory. Tatiana, please. You're welcome. Good morning. I'd like to see you here. And so we can start with the biofeedback. So, and what the, that's the biofeedback is. Uh, the biofeedback is, um, as we, we know, is a technique that is enabled to individuals to learn uh, how to change their physiological parameters with purpose of improvement their uh, health and performance. So it means that biofeedback is a technique that uh, learned uh, the person to help himself. And the biofeedback technique uh, is uh, based uh, on um, is based on uh, two uh, facts. Uh, first of all, the, the law that um, uh, biofeedback uh, that our nervous systems uh, has a neural capacity. Uh, it means that the um, uh, the brain or nervous system can memorize the state conditions, uh, which is rewarded and which is uh, needed for the uh, for the for the nerve systems. And uh, the second fact, very important fact, is that. Um, well, dysfunctions are reflected in physiological parameters and, for example, the uh, brain dysfunctions are reflected in EEG parameters, electroencephalographic parameters. And so it means that uh, if we can change these parameters, we can uh, improve our state. But the problem is uh, how we can explain the person to change their physiological parameters. It means how we can explain the person to change, for example, electroencephalography. And so uh, it's very important uh, to represent uh, these uh, physiological parameters in some modality. And it could be the auditory or visual modality, which would be clear of a person, which would be uh, is able to uh, change. So during the biofeedback, uh, with the uh, help of electrodes and sensor, we record the physiological parameters and we represent them as a uh, visual or auditory modality. It could be the music, it could be slideshow, it could be the movies. And the task for person is uh, to change these uh, physiological, these uh, biofeedback parameters in direction which is needed. And if he changed the uh, characteristics of auditory and or visual uh, feedback parameters, he can change his state. Um, so the biofeedback treatment consists of several steps. Uh, and usually we perform the uh, medical and or psychological, maybe psychiatric pre-training assessment. Uh, it could be the neurologist or um, the psychological uh, examinations. And very often we ask the patient to complete the questionnaire about his uh, disorders. And we perform this uh, assessment before our training and at the end of our therapy. So that the event we, so we perform the training, pre-training assessment and post-training assessment. It's, of course, it's very important uh, to uh, assess the efficacy of our therapy. 
And uh, so the second step, uh, it's um, very important to assess the, the um, physiological parameters which we'd like to improve. Uh, these physiological parameters uh, we call the biofeedback parameters. And that during pre-training assessment of physiological parameters, uh, we they uh, calculated uh, the threshold for our uh, biofeedback training very often. Uh, so uh, when they know, then they finished their pre-training assessment of uh, physiological parameters, the biofeedback parameters, we can start the biofeedback training. Usually biofeedback training consists of several sessions and usually it could be um, 30, 50 sessions and which sessions are performed uh, twice and four uh, times a week. And, and um, as I said, at the end of biofeedback therapy, they uh, conduct the post-training assessment. The biofeedback, uh, the biofeedback um, therapy uh, are conducted in accordance with the biofeedback protocol. Uh, the biofeedback protocol uh, is design of biofeedback therapy, and uh, this protocol defines the um, group of patients uh, which is uh, for which uh, this therapy uh, would be efficacy. And this protocol defines the biofeedback parameters and conditions for these parameters. Uh, it means uh, what kind of uh, it's, the protocol defines uh, that kind of uh, training we are going to perform. So it could be ARC training when we need, when we uh, try to enhance uh, some activity, or it could be down training uh, when we um, try to reduce the parameter, reduce, for example, amplitude of power spectral over EG. The biofeedback protocol protocols uh, defines the uh, electrode positions and defines the uh, number of um, biofeedback parameters. Uh, the um, biofeedback protocols defines the number of session duration of session and feedback, feedback modality. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Neurosoft uh, recommends to use biofeedback protocols, uh, which were proven by clinical study. Uh, the great problem here that unfortunately uh, we don't have such guidelines or such standards or which describe uh, the proved biofeedback protocols. Uh, and um, so we, when we select the biofeedback protocol, we should uh, to research there's some clinical uh, study and so we should uh, select the biofeedback protocol uh, which was um, recommended by some local standard or some local guidelines. Um, so um, now I've described uh, the several uh, biofeedback uh, protocols which was uh, which were proved by clinical study and um, all I uh, described the protocol which has a very long history of applications. So uh, we can start with EMG training protocols. I think it is um, the one of the um, simplest training to perform for the patients. EMG training uh, is very often applied um, for relaxation in strength management, in pain management. And um, in this work, uh, which I represent here, uh, this uh, protocol was um, clinically proved by randomized um, one single, uh, single blind um, controlled study. So, and this protocol uh, was efficacy, efficacy for the patient with um, um, migraine and tension type headache. Uh, so, um, the, of course, the pre-training and post-training assessment is necessary here. And they use the examination uh, of neurologists and um, questionnaires about the headache as a pre-training pre and post-training assessment. And here, then, uh, then 
in the down training protocol uh, was applied. Um, this protocol, we put electrode on frontalis and trapezius muscles. And um, uh, their task was for patient was to relax. And um, mm, this, uh, we used the visual and auditory feedback um, for, this, um, for this training. So um, they very often use this um, um, this protocol for for reduction of the uh, um, the some headache and tension type tension type headache and migraine and just so I think that we can try to um, to demonstrate this protocol now. Uh, so uh, sometimes uh, why this protocol is very important for us, sometimes we use EMG training uh, protocol as a component of uh, EG training uh, protocol uh, in the case when the person has some hyperactivity symptoms. And to reduce these hyperactivity symptoms, uh, we can apply some pre-training EMG protocol for this. Um, so... Um, then um, we very uh, wide use the EEG training and um, then uh, as a biofeedback parameters, we uh, apply a EEG parameters. We very often call the biofeedback as neurofeedback. So, and uh, accordance um, with um, Mr. Cropper of all uh, neurofeedback uh, uh, protocols, uh, we can divide it into two types. So it could be relaxation protocols and it could be activation protocols. Relaxation protocol includes um, the uh, in enhancement of alpha uh, activity and um, alpha training is intended to deactivate, to inhibit the corresponding, corresponding cortical area. And then the second type of new feedback protocol is activation protocol. And uh, activation protocol uh, includes the enhancement of beta activity and the high frequency G activity. And the beta training is, in, is intended to activate corresponding cortical area. So it means if we need to activate some cortical region, we use the like alpha training protocols and that is very important uh sorry now we we need to activate corresponding cortical error we use the beta training protocol and then very important to inhibit this activity to inhibit corresponding the cortical area we apply the alpha training protocols i think that the um, Piniston Kulkovsky protocol is a very um, is a very wide uh, used protocol. This protocol have um, this protocol uh, has a lot of modifications, and um, so uh, and this protocol has a very long history of applications. Uh, so this uh, protocol, Piniston Kulkovsky protocol, uh, was developed for treatment patient with, uh, ad with addictive disorders, and so we have so, some experience of application this protocol for persons with uh, post-stress, um, post-traumatic stress disorders. And uh, so uh, the theory for this protocol is that we know uh, uh, that the Alcoholism is associated of um, uh, um, put synchronized and deficient of alpha activity. But the alcoholic can increase the alpha activity after the alcohol cons consumption. So it means that if they are without alcohol, they have a low alpha activity. And after alcohol consumption, they can uh, they have a um, high alpha activity and so and the purpose of uh, this alcohol of this protocol is uh, to enhance alpha activity of this person uh, without some consumptions of alcohol so mm, it would be a alpha and theta on your feedback protocol up training protocol 
Uh, so before the therapy, uh, we perform, uh, was performed the pre-training assessments. It was a psychiatric assessment usually, and the uh, person will ask uh, to uh, complete some psychological test. It was an MPI test, the, um, the back depressed inventory, and others. And um, after that, uh, the, um, the baseline untrained EEG was recorded and they calculated the level of alpha activity and beta activity, the level of the um, neurofeedback parameters. And um, before the main training, before the neurofeedback, the um, relaxation uh, with temperature training is recommended. So it's need to uh, decrease some hyperactivity symptoms for this patient. So in our case, we can use EMG training for relaxation uh, because of it's very easy to, to, to do for person and um, uh, so we uh, we are going to demonstrate it, and um, uh, we uh, uh, that uh, at least uh, five session of uh, uh, this temperature training are uh, uh, very very recommended. After the EMG training, the next step was a neurofeedback with alpha training and beta training. Uh, so um, then we perform this protocol, the person uh, will ask to relax and um, the electrode uh, for a neurofeedback training uh, was placed on O1 positions uh, in this, uh, in, in the the um, protocol of Pinstone Kulkowski. Uh, but now, in majority case, uh, we use P4 uh, positions electrode in accordance with 1020 systems. So um, then we uh, place all, all um, electrodes on the patient's hands. Uh, we ask the patient to close his eyes and um, uh, the standard induction for this uh, protocol was to relax and sit down in reverie. Uh, it means the reverie, it means they ask the patient uh, to think nothing. And uh, uh, then the person try to relax, the alpha activity uh, increase, and then the uh, alpha activity was more than threshold of uh, the person uh, hear the music and the auditory feedback uh, was recommended for this, uh, for this training. And um, then the person um, loan uh, to uh, generate this, uh, this, to produce uh, this auditory feedback, he um, progressively relaxed during uh, this protocol. Uh, so, for example, in Russia, uh, we, for treatment of patients with addictive disorder, uh, we use the alpha training only. Uh, but in accordance with the Pinston Kukowski protocol, the, seven, the second step is a step theta training. The theta training is the more complicated training. And after the uh, person have learned to relax with alpha training, he starts to relax with help of theta training. So the position electron would be the same, and after that, she, he, the person uh, should uh, enhance the theta activity. Uh, and the theta activity is characterized by, by sleep, and so it means that, um, then, the, that uh, then the person relaxes the theta training, he relaxes more uh, than with alpha training. Uh, so then number of session uh, was described as a 30 sessions and, and then training uh, um, trainings uh, were performed four or five times a week. Um, this protocol was uh, approved by a lot of uh, studies and the randomized control study uh, were performed uh, too. So uh, very uh, often we ask uh, the uh, specialist asked how we can uh, to explain person uh, to relax and how we can explain person to change with their EG activity. So in this uh, protocol, they often um, show us the phrases which he applied to promote muscle activity or to mm -hmm. promote the calming of the mind. And 
So we have um, some reactivation phrase, which they which were applied to bring uh, the person to a world of activity. But of course, uh, these uh, phrases uh, would be um, um, would be depends on our language, and we have different languages, different uh, different uh, um, phrases which we can use for our relaxations. And um, uh, in majority case, we use auto, auto, autogenic technique to relaxation to when we apply this uh, protocol. Uh, so, um, as I said, the alpha training um, protocol we can use for treatment patients with all addictive disorders. It could be different disorders. And so very often we use this uh, uh, protocol for stress management, in stress management and relaxation, to, in brain relaxation. Uh, so we have um, several case studies which show that the new feedback um, can be applied for treatment patients with depression. And on the basis of this um, protocol, uh, is theory that the person that the depression uh, is um, characterized by a symmetrical alpha activity in the lateral frontal re region. So it means that uh, depression depressed person, uh, they um, have uh, less left side activation. So it means that they have a lot of alpha activity uh, on the left frontal region. Uh, so we have um, information about LI protocol. It was the one of the first protocol which was used for uh, treatment patients with depression. And um, then uh, by then, uh, new feedback parameters for a live protocol is uh, the ratio ratio of alpha asymmetry. Uh, so here see the oh, sorry uh, see the here the ratio which we use as as a new feedback parameters and in this ratio f four it is a power spectrum of alpha activity uh, which we call it from the electrode allocated at f of four points it's um right it's right frontal region it's so it means that f four is uh, alpha which we recorded from the uh, uh, right uh, frontal region and a uh, three point a three point uh, here it is a power spectrum which we recorded with help of electrode and this electrode uh, is located uh, at f three point which is a left frontal region and it means that f three point uh, is an um, alpha activity uh, which um, we recorded from the left frontal region. And the task condition for this training uh, is that we need this ratio was more than zero. So in this case, um, mm -hmm. we can normalize uh, this alpha activity. Uh, but uh, this uh, protocol uh, was not, uh, we uh, don't have some um, some randomized controlled study which show that uh, the efficacy of these protocols and we describe this protocol uh, was described in different um, uh, books and in different articles but majority of them are the case study articles. Um, so there another uh, Another example of the uh, neurofeedback protocol, which can be used for uh, therapy of, of a person with depression, is Harmon depression protocol. And so, as I said, then uh, then uh, the person, uh, the depressed person, they has a, a less left side. Um, activation so we can use the uh, activating better protocol for them and uh, in this case we can uh, uh, place the electrode uh, on the uh, left frontal region uh, so uh, in this uh, this better protocol uh, was efficacy uh, and um, but um, the person who received all this therapy, uh, they complied on 
on some side effects and side effect was the some headache or insomnia and Hammond uh, have changed this protocol and he represent the new feedback where the task was to activate beta activity and to inhibit all alpha and beta activity at the beginning of the sessions here and this uh, runs uh, was 20, 22 minutes. And at the end of the session, he performed additional training when the person was asked to inhibit the activity with 20, 15 hertz frequency band. And it was the, um, and this run duration uh, was 10, 8 minutes. Uh, but uh, this is uh, protocol. Um, uh, were, this protocol was uh, proved up by Harman's uh, studies only, and so the majority uh, scientists they conclude uh, that we need them um, them randomized uh, uh, double blind controlled uh, study uh, to verification of this uh, protocol too. Uh, so, um, I think uh, the protocol was proved by a lot of randomized study is a new feedback protocol uh, for treatment patients with attention deficit hyperactivity disorders. So, we have uh, a lot of uh, protocol for uh, with persons, the person with ADHD, uh, and all of them uh, are uh, activating protocol, and but uh, these protocols are are different for each other by then then by feedback parameters by like by um electrode placement and um, sometimes uh, by their uh, their frequency of um, beta activity which i applied in this protocol so here i am represented are uh, the uh, uh, well, uh, no protocol, uh, theta better training, or sometimes we call this protocol better theta training. Uh, so, uh, the person uh, with uh, the children and adults with ADHD uh, are very good candidate for biofeedback and electroencephalography of uh, the uh, people with ADHD uh, is characterized by excessive um, uh, theta activity in frontal and central region, region of the brain. And uh, so we understand that activation, um, activation protocol uh, would be uh, very successful for them. But this person, they are um, characterized by hyperactivity symptoms and uh, then the person move a lot. It's not very really good for the AG um, recording. So and majority, uh, in majority study, we've, we start with EMG training protocol, EMG training, IMG down training protocol. And these uh, protocol are important to um, relax. Uh, for person. Uh, so um, they use the same protocol which we, uh, which I have described when I'm talking about the uh, therapy of the person with migraine and um, headache. Um, then the person calm down uh, so we can uh, begin the new feedback. So um, as um, we can start uh, with uh, um, determining the baseline EG uh, rhythm. So we need to know the, um, the value of alpha of theta beta uh, activity of this person. And we use this value for the, uh, our training as a threshold. Uh, so, uh, the, as I said, the electrode placement would be different. So, in uh, in this study, they use a CZ point uh, for children, and we use FCZ uh, point as active electrode position for adults. FCZ point is point between FZ and CZ. Uh, 
and then reference and uh, ground electrode the are placed on mastered in this uh, protocol. Uh, so we use the auditory and visual feedback and the, uh, oh. during this session, uh, we ask patient to uh, start to relax. To, and uh, after that, uh, we ask him uh, to sit down calm uh, and to try to find uh, some uh, state uh, which we call as an active focusing state. Uh, then he uh, received the um, feedback. So sometimes it's very difficult to be in this uh, active focusing state, especially for uh, children, but uh, for adults too. And very often the session uh, is divided into several runs. Uh, it could be the beginning of the therapy, it could be three or five runs or trials. Uh, and uh, between these runs, uh, the patient relax and um, so we read a lot of a session we need to efficacy um, therapy and it could be uh, 40 sessions sometimes we need more more session to help the person with their therapy with the with the ADD. so um we have uh, some new information about application your feedback for the uh, therapy the person did the stroke and uh, the um, basis of the therapy uh, is the date is the facts uh, that um, is information about two uh, activity it is new activity and sensory motor activity new activity and sensory motor activity uh, are recorded in on from the central region of of our brain and we know that then um, then the person uh, um, to make some movement with hand or if the person only image but he performs some hand movement the memory in the central region is blocked so the, uh, the amplitude of power spectrum of this rhythm uh, uh, decreased, then the person uh, moved uh, or think about um, the hands movement. But another uh, rhythm and sensory motor rhythm uh, is um, this activity um, enhanced in this situation. So then the person uh, uh, then the person are thinking about the hands movement and the person the perform hands movement movement sensory motor activity increase. So uh, in the in, uh, in on the basis of these facts, uh, uh, was uh, two about the back protocols were designed for this. So the new down training protocol. Um, were applied for person uh, with, with the therapy, the person with the stroke. And I think that Alexei is going to, to tell you some words about this protocol. And so we have some uh, study which describe the uh, sensory motor uh, training uh, training protocol for rehabilitation of the person with the stroke. So in this uh, study, the pre-training, post-training assessment um, were performed. And of course, uh, the um, um, EMG, oh, and of course, the baseline electroencephalography was recorded too, and it was uh, necessary to calculate the sensory motor rhythm and the fat and battery. Uh, the um, therapy of the person with stroke in this protocol wa was divided into two parts. Uh, the first part, uh, we use EMG up training protocol uh, to strengthen the abductor policies brevis muscles. Uh, so it means they put the electrodes of, on the uh, paretic muscles, uh, on the um, muscle abductor policies brevis and the task for patient was to increase uh, the um, muscle amplitude if it was possible if of course it is it was possible and um, um, so this person has different bar feedback it was auditory and uh, a visual feedback in this 
um, be biotic back training. The next step uh, was um, neurofeedback. Uh, during neurofeedback, the uh, sensory motor activity um, um, was applied. At the beginning of the session, the uh, person will ask to uh, imagine them imagine that uh, he, um, uh, he um, perform uh, that he performed some movements uh, by the paretic hands and in these moments the sensory motor activity uh, was calculated uh, very important uh, that that uh, this activity uh, was calculated in um, ipsilateral to the lesion uh, region. Uh, it means that we calculate sensor motor rhythm in the contralateral region uh, to the paretic hands. Uh, so uh, when we know the baseline sensor motor act activity, uh, we can uh, start the neurofeedback. So um, then, um, aud auditory and visual feedback uh, were provided and the task for person was to um, to increase the uh, sensory motor activity and uh, uh, decrease the that and that activity in this moment uh, so and um, of course, if this uh, uh, training was uh, successful, the person here, their visual and auditory uh, um, feedback, he gets a visual or auditory feedback. Uh, it is, um, we have um, several study uh, which show that sensor motory um, protocol can be applied uh, for the rehabilitation of the person with stroke. Uh, but uh, so the, I think that specialists conclude that some randomized study uh, as necessary to uh, verification to prove these protocols. And um, so I think that um, uh, the two of uh, protocol which I have described, we will demonstrate all together. And we will try all together. And now I think that Alexei ready to describe the, our software, which we are going to apply in our demonstration. Thank you, Tatiana. Uh, now let's have a look on uh, Neurosoft solutions for neurofeedback therapy. Uh, you can find uh, this solution on our website. Uh, on products, e.g. page. Uh, here on the top uh, level, you can see e.g. solutions. You can scroll our predefined e.g. solutions and you can select system for biofeedback trainings. And on this page, you can see some features of this system, uh, detailed description, brochure. You can download the brochure of this system. Uh, you can view a uh, video on our YouTube channel about biofeedback trainings technique. And also you can see delivery set on this page and some uh, useful uh, documents about uh, this technique. So please visit our website and find all necessary information. In few words, uh, in uh, this system, uh, we can uh, see two monitor stationary system. One monitor is used for the patient feedback and another for the doctor to manage the, the biofeedback training. Uh, our system uh, have an ab ability to provide feedback on uh, such parameters. It is EEG, uh, I mean amplitude, EEG frequencies of uh, rhythms, uh, powers of the rhythms and so on. It is EMG amplitude, it is uh, ECG, uh, heart rate, it is respiration rate, SPO2 level, and even uh, body temperature. All these uh, parameters can be used for uh, biofeedback training technique. Uh, our system provides visual, audio, and game feedback for the patient. I'll show you. And also we have a 
quite flexible uh, system to customize and manage uh, different type of trainings, uh, different type of parameters and uh, create uh, different uh, biofeedback protocols. And also we have such tool as <coughs> training successfulness uh, trend. Also we have a possibility to manage uh, EEG training during uh, the process, during the session. And we have a generation system for the reports, uh, which will report, uh, prepare report automatically uh, based on predefined templates. And also using several uh, biofeedback exams, you can track the dynamic of uh, changes in parameters that uh, you are corrected during these trainings. Here is uh, different types of uh, biofeedback for the patient. We have games, uh, some visual information, some slideshow videos and uh, sounds. And here is the uh, display uh, for doctor's monitor where doctor can see the native traces, uh, the result uh, of uh, training in uh, biofeedback successfulness trend. And also he has the window for managing uh, conditions and report and uh, neurofeedback uh, template during the session. I'll show how it works uh, now on the software. Also, we can use uh, different additional uh, analysis tools in our neurospectrum.net software. We have a lot of tools to build uh, uh, maps, uh, to calculate some graphics, uh, some tables, and so on. And all this information can be included to the final report of our biofeedback training. Here is the report, which is uh, generated automatically. Okay, now let's uh, see uh, how it works in the software. Uh, here is neuronspectrum.net software. Uh, here is the start page where we can see some uh, toolbar buttons. We can see examinations list which were uh, recorded uh, today or yesterday. And also we can see some frequently used actions and also the list of uh, examination templates. Here we can see, for example, routine EEG, video EEG, evoke potentials, and so on. And here we will use now mirror feedback uh, examination. I'll just press this comment. We'll put uh, patient name and press OK button. Uh, I'll show you this process without a device connected uh, to the PC in emulation mode. Uh, automatically, window for the patient with feedback is shown on the second monitor. Now we have two monitors connected to this PC. And now I move this uh, window to this uh, uh, screen for you to show. And what we can see uh, in this screen, uh, we can see the area of uh, native traces, it is here. We can see that device is not connected now. Uh, we can see the uh, future neurofeedback successfulness trend. Now it is empty. And also on the right side, we can see the neurofeedback manager window where we can select uh, our neurofeedback template. Here is the predefined list of uh, uh, predefined templates. And also we can uh, manage e each condition of uh, each template during the session. Uh, first of all, we need to select uh, what channels we will use in our session. Uh, for example, I'll select uh, this montage with eight EEG and one ECG channel, just for demonstration. Uh, a little bit later, we will show how it works on real patient. Uh, to start, I just press, for example, monitoring button. Uh, first of all, we need to check impedance and then when we see the traces uh, which are going from our electrodes, we can press record button and then start our training. I press start button here and you can see that feedback now working for our patient on the second screen. And also uh, we can see how it's going uh, in our 
neurofeedback manager window. Here we can see result successfulness, current result successfulness for our training. And we can the same successfulness for each condition. Now we can see that we use neurofeedback template alpha training. It contains only one training condition. In which condition uh, we can see that alpha rhythm from 8 up to 14 hertz index of this rhythm should be in this uh, range upper than 30 percent and lower than 100 percent. Uh, as for derivations, it is not not selected derivations here, but we can select one or two or all derivations. If we have no selection, the software will calculate all visible EEG derivations uh, in our current montage. Let's try to select, for example, only occipital durations. And now we can also see the result of successfulness. And if we uh, decide that it is quite easy task for our patient, we can increase the difficulty, just changing the range of our learning condition, training condition. You see that successfulness is now becoming lower because I just make the task for our patient more difficult. Now it's zero percent. It's quite difficult and I can change and make task easier for my patient. According to successfulness, the speed of fish is higher or lower. And you can see that now our patient need to uh, swim faster than his previous result. The upper fish is uh, uh, swimming with previous result of our patient. So, what we can do? Uh, what we can do also uh, here? We can select, for example, another uh, neurofeedback template. As Tatiana told you, during one session we can use several uh, neurofeedback templates. For example, we can start with EMG training, then we can continue with alpha training, and we can finish with uh, beta training, for example. So we select now another training uh, template. And here you can see already two different conditions included in this training. First uh, condition is a better low frequency rhythm index. And the second is better high frequency rhythm index. But also we can add another conditions using this button. You can add, for example, um, EG rhythm condition where we can select the rhythm. For example, uh, I also will add for my patient task to uh, decrease uh, delta rhythm activity because he need to increase better. I will make something like this. I will ask my patient to make delta low than 10% of index. And you can see the result of successfulness for this condition. And here we can see the averaged result of all our conditions. We can switch off some conditions temporarily, for example, and then switch them on back if it is necessary during our session. Uh, so what else conditions we can use? EG rhythm index level, EG rhythm indexes ratio, for example, if I want not only to increase alpha, but also decrease theta rhythm, I can make this type of condition where I can choose the uh, ratio between these two ryth rhythms. Uh, I can add head rate condition where I can select the range of head rate for my patient. The same I can add respiration rate, galvanic skin response amplitude, EMG amplitude, uh, EEG amplitude, oxygen saturation level, and so on. For example, EEG amplitude in selected frequency range. What is it? It is quite important uh, condition where I can select the EEG amplitude for some uh, durations. For example, I'll choose frontal durations. I can choose also the frequency which I want to increase. For example, I want to increase um, alpha rhythm from 8 up to 40 for example, and here I also can uh, choose the range of amplitude in microvolts for my frequency for my selected durations. So it is quite flexible uh, condition and you can use it in different uh, templates. 
what else templates we can use? For example, rehabilitation of uh, sensor motor cortex uh, for uh, rehabilitation after strokes. As Tatiana told you, we have the special uh, technique, special template here, contains, which contains two conditions, rhythm power of mu rhythm. Uh, we can select here the range of power and we can select here the uh, durations. Uh, here we select all durations, durations of left hemisphere because it is uh, template for right hand. And also we have another condition for rhythm asymmetry, uh, also by mu rhythm. It's asymmetry between uh, left and right hemisphere. And we can see that if successfulness is good, uh, we will see the right hand movement on our feedback uh, window. Uh, as for feedback, uh, feedback uh, types, uh, we can select the feedback from this list. It's quite a big list of different games for our um, patient, for example, some movies or for example, some racing game and so on. And also we can add some slideshow or video film, especially for uh, this patient. For example, we can use slideshow with predefined list of photos or images, which are interesting for um, our patient. And also here we can select audio files uh, for playing uh, sound as a feedback. The volume of uh, sound will be higher if the successfulness uh, is good and will be lower if successfulness is uh, worse. Uh, so, uh, also to make our session easy for a doctor, easy for assistant, uh, on the bottom part we have here the list of predefined uh, functional tests and each of these tests is con uh, connected with the uh, uh, pre-selected neurofeedback template. For example, the first uh, alpha training functional test is connected with alpha training. The second uh, functional test, beta training, I'll press it, it is connected with beta training. You can see that now template is selected automatically and we switch to another feedback type for the patient. And so it is just for help uh, to our assistant or to doctor to make session uh, more easily. And the third functional test is alpha theta training. I press it and you can see that my template is changed. And now I uh, begin uh, training with this uh, template. So we can stop training after all. And at the end of the examination, we can prepare report just pressing one button. Report will be prepared automatically according to a predefined uh, report template. You can customize this report template. Um, by default, it includes um, information about, uh, we should select a predefined report template neurofeedback for our report. Uh, it includes information about the patient, about uh, acquisition settings, and uh, also we can see uh, our trend of successfulness, and we can see some results of our training also as successfulness persons. Uh, now, I think it is all I wanted to show you with the software, and we can go to our third part of our webinar. Uh, now we will demonstrate how uh, this will work on our real patient in real conditions. So, Alexei, we should show the video, I think, now. Uh, we will put all electrodes and Tatiana will describe all the process. Mm -hmm. Still? I don't know. Our patient. Tatiana, please speak louder. Okay. Most of them. I will speak uh, so, uh, our patient, Vladimir, uh, if we believe to be our patient in this webinar. And now we are going to put the electrodes uh, for our bar feedback. So we are going to perform the electron myoglobin uh, down training 
and uh, in accordance with the protocol which I have described. And uh, for this purpose, uh, we can uh, issue a uh, place the electrode on the forehead muscle or traffic source muscles. So we can select, I think that's more easier and uh, to uh, put this electrode on, on the forehead muscles. For this purpose, we can use the different type of electrodes. It could be um, um, calf electrodes, and we um, we are going to fit the electrode with help of the with the um, electrode piece. Or I think we can use the disposal electrodes uh, with the pin connector and the responding cable I applied. So, uh, as I said, uh, we start uh, with the, we are going to uh, place this electrode on the forehead. So, very important to prepare skin and the electrodes with the outlaw. So, yeah. The tomography recording is a Bible recording, and so we need to put two active electrodes. So, first electrode and the second electrode. The ground electrode for this duration, uh, we are going to put on the mass plate. Electrodes. So we should to put the cable from the electrodes of uh, that they which uh, they uh, did not uh, did not move during the uh, bar feedback. Uh, so uh, we connect the cable to our system uh, in accordance with our montage. In our um, in our case, uh, we select um, E1. Uh, the first channels and uh, in during our training uh, we are going to use the neural spectrum 65 system and of course uh, you can uh, 61 sorry neural spectrum 65 system but of course you can uh, use different type of neural soft system for this uh, for this training so it was the active electrode for EMG uh, training and now we should to put the proper Neurofeedback for EEG training. Uh, so uh, we uh, we are demonstrating the uh, the training in accordance with the Eastern Purpose protocol, and we are going to show you the better uh, better better training um, which is applied for uh, patients with ADHD. And in this case, we need um, uh, two points. We should find the two points. Uh, on um, the hand of the patients uh, is this um, P4 point and this CZ point. So uh, we um, find this point in accordance with the 10 20 international EG systems. And I think that the um, description of these uh, uh, rules of these systems uh, you can find. And I have uh, very embraced uh, and um, uh, description in detail for this. Uh, system, uh, but uh, very important for us to measure uh, free uh, distance. The first distance, it is then uh, the distance between the nasal, nasal bridge of the nose, and then inner on the occipital area. Uh, so they have all this distance of movie as CZ point. CZ point, and we can mark this point, special marker here. So uh, the next point, uh, the next measure which we are need, it is um, distance between the two, uh, between the left and right, we are the go point here and here, and we measure this distance, and this line should be crossed at that point. Yeah. And um, so now we should just find the um, see, uh, twenty percent of this distance, and now it would be uh, 
in my case, it will be a two centimeter, and with a distance, um, and I uh, measured two centimeter or two uh, right, and it will be, be a C, C4 point in my case. Uh, so, and I mark it, this point with the marker. And then next, our measure, measurement, which is, um, which is important for me, I measure uh, the circumference of the hand and so uh, I should to find the half of this distance. So with my piece of paper. Help of this is it would be 30 centimeter and the 10 percent of uh, um, this uh, distance, the, uh, the 10 percent of the half of the circumference, um, it would be 10 percent per centimeter. Uh, I should measure uh, from the uh, OZ point. OZ point, um, it is a point which I find as a uh, this, uh, from, I measured the 10, the distance from the opposite point to them to the right, it will be all two point. So, and uh, the last point which I need, uh, it is, um, it is P4 point, and I should measure the distance between, uh, between them, C4 point and O2 point, and then half of this distance. So, in my case, it would be a seven centimeter. It would be a it would be a P4 point. So, we have the point which are needed in our webinar, in our trading. It would be CZ points. And it will be P4 point. Uh, so uh, now we should to place the electrode for EG recording. Uh, so uh, we can start uh, with um, uh, alpha trading, I think. And so we should prepare the uh, P4 point for this. We uh, prepared this um, scheme under the electrode with the possible tool. Sometimes, Uh, sometimes, in some cases, uh, we can uh, prepare this scheme with the Abus of Peace. It's needed to decrease the impedance. So, after this preparation, I, uh, I take the electrode. In uh, our training, uh, we are going to use the uh, carp electrode. So it's a reusable electrode. And we think this electrode is the paste. And uh, put this electrode in our point. So, uh, for additional expression, we can use um, uh, some uh, paper, um, some paper tape, uh, plaster, uh, or we can use the little piece of the gaze, how I do in my case. So, I should to press this gaze on, the, on this point. So, that's okay. It will be P4 point. And I should connect with points uh, to the, our system in accordance uh, with our montage. Uh, so in this system, in this system, we don't have the um, the P4 uh, P4 input, so we can use the C that point only. So we can connect to C Z input, but we put the electrode on the P4 point. So. Uh, uh, 
this knowledge so to prepare the scissor point for the alpha training. So, and so we do the same state to prepare this point. Uh, sometimes uh, we can additional uh, additional um, fix this electrode with some cap, textile cap, of course. But I think it does not very important. And we can use some base and put and fix this press this gas to the electrode. Uh, so you see that that's okay. So uh, it is the active electrode which we use, and now we need to put the ground electrode and the reference electron for our recording. So sometimes we can add uh, some paste on the our base. Okay, uh, so now we prepare skin for the uh, round and weapon electrode. And uh, so we prepare the storage skin. So I have a location to take the glasses. And so I prepare, I prepare the story. Um, uh, we can um, use a little amount of the energy piece. Uh, and we use the electrodes. And now we use the same arm. The push is the source of the area which we prepared, and we secure this electrode with the medical table. So now we, uh, we need uh, to connect the cable of the electrode to the unit. Does not matter whether we put the ground reference electrode. So it could be left or right or right side. So we use the reference again. And in the same step, we are going to go for another electrode. After we close our training, we connect the divide card cable to the back cable. Now we are connect only one electrode. So we, we, we push the now electrode and the next one. And now we should connect it. Um, in some cases, in some cases, especially they don't take it at the average piece. Uh, if they, we can we can do it uh, if um, the impedance is very low. So we can uh, we can get people only with alcohol only, and after that we can uh, put them the electrode with them with um, piece. So now we need to twist the electrodes. It's 
need to reduce um, electromagnetic numbers. So, and now we're important to check up the impedance and we should ask the patient that's okay. So we can start our training. Uh, so, uh, we raise our softly. Okay, so uh, now we should start with the new exam. Uh, we need to type all information about our patient, which are important for us. And this information uh, will go to our um, report at the end. So, okay. So we are waiting for a while. So now uh, we can see the uh, screen now with full of uh, neural feedback. And we start with, um, as I said, uh, alpha theta training. Um, and um, um, so to be sure that we have a high quality recording, we check the impedance. So that's okay, let's see, okay. So we are ready to start our training. Uh, just, uh, we, uh, as I said, in accordance with alpha theta uh, training protocol, uh, we need uh, to start with um, the EMG down training. It needs uh, to, uh, to reduce some, uh, uh, some um, hyperactivity symptoms and it needs the patient uh, calm down. Uh, so, but at the beginning of this session, we should assess uh, the, uh, the free shot of EMG amplitude. Uh, so uh, we ask our patient uh, to sit down and try don't move. Uh, so we can do and now we are start our recording. Uh, so now we can add different trends for our uh, software. So for example, we can add the EMG amplitude trends and we can add the alpha trends and we need a theta width index. Okay. So now um, we can start recording. And um, so, so we can see that the, um, uh, the volume of the alpha activity and that activity, so and in the activity uh, are reflected in these trends. And so we have different way to calculation of EMG uh, differential. Uh, they see here the current value for EMG amplitude, and he see a current value for alpha training and and the theta training. So we can use the sum map to calculation of ratio, or we can can use this this parameter, and we can use this parameter as a ratio for our. Um, um, for our training. Uh, so usually we need uh, five, uh, 15 minutes to recording the, uh, the free short, to recording the background activity and training activity. Uh, so I think that we can uh, assess this activity now and to see that uh, the, the amplitude of EMG training in our way is something 40, 30, uh, microvolt, and so we can uh, change uh, the threshold here for our person. This would be individual threshold for our person. Uh, so, uh, stop, and now we can change this activity. So we can, for example, we can start with the 40 microvolt. And now we are going to our training. Uh, we ask our patient to seem comfortable. 
Uh, so we uh, he uh, we ask him uh, um, don't close your eyes, and uh, so uh, you should to relax your muscle, muscle hand, muscle neck, and uh, try. Uh, and we would be used an um, auditory uh, uh, auditory feedback here and the task for our patient would be to increase the volume of this music. So, you ready? Okay, that's okay, and then we can start. So, uh, oh, it was very easy for our patient, so we can reduce our free shot. Uh, so, uh, at the beginning of our session, uh, at the beginning of the therapy, uh, we can change uh, this um, uh, free short. It is necessary uh, for patient to uh, learn, to understand how he can manage the feedback. But at the second part of our therapy, uh, we don't change the free short usually, and we um, so we uh, they put these uh, three shots as a uh, minimum of uh, the amplitude which we have uh, during the feedback. So we can reduce, for example, on 20 microvolt. I think it would be more difficult for our patient, but he managed, he, he and we, we uh, hear the music. Yes. And we see that the, uh, that the current training success successful would be 40, 60 percent. So he understands uh, still, but I think that it's difficult for them to, uh, to maintain this state. Uh, usually uh, this uh, training, MG training, uh, lasts uh, 10 minutes. So, and uh, as I said, the purpose of this training is start to muscle relaxation for them. So at the end of this uh, run in G training, uh, so we can we can ask the patient close his eyes and continue to relax his muscles. You see that the current training success successfulness is very really high. So I think we uh, don't wait for 10 minutes. Uh, I think that it's clear how we perform this training and we can start the more complicated training, the alpha training here. So now we should uh, assess the alpha training uh, threshold. Uh, in our case, now the, our person, he closed his eyes, he relaxed, close his eyes, no eyes, please. It's di is it difficult, yeah? Yes, it is the first attempt of our patient uh, for the for biofeedback, so it's not easy for them. So uh, I think it would be good if we stop training and give some rest for our patient a little. So, and now we can start uh, to perform them in the alpha training. Uh, um, so let me I ask you to close your eyes now. Uh, so, and now we can calculate threshold for alpha rhythm and for theta rhythm when our patient uh, is um, in closed eyes conditions. So it's not very really high alpha activity. Uh, so in very really high theta rhythm. So, uh, as I said, for a calculation of free short, we can use this such kind of the trend, or we can use some maps which, you should, which Alexei uh, show you. So, oh, we see that the alpha indexes are uh, increased. 
so uh, 21%, 37%. So we can uh, use a uh, value as a threshold for alpha activity. So as I said, uh, in accordance with the Piniston Kulkowski protocol, uh, we can uh, use uh, the alpha training for brain relaxation. Uh, so in our case, auditory feedback uh, the, would be apply, will be applied. So let's start with the 25% of alpha activity. So uh, now uh, we ask our patient uh, to relax, relax your muscles and uh, try don't try to and it's very important to sink down into reverie. It means we ask you uh, to think nothing. So are you ready? So we can start our training again. It would be our second one. So, um, so it's not easy. And uh, the patient try to find uh, the state, then the alpha activity is high and then he uh, hears the music. Uh, they see that the current activity uh, here less than we need. So uh, you try to uh, think nothing, that's okay, it's a very pleasant situation. Of course, if our patient is calculate something in his brain, we close eyes, we have a very low, successful. So it's very good. So let this way, try again. So we can hear some music. So... Okay, I think they should to make uh, uh, this um, easier <laughs> for our patient. This task easier. So no, it's not. Uh, Uh, very important for patient to find this state, state of mind. You should relax your, your uh, muscle, your uh, head and neck, relax. So now, unfortunately, so very often the first training can be, oh, I think that our patient is nervous a little, so, so he understands the state, but he can't to maintain this state of, break, of, the, of health. So, okay, uh, the autogenic techniques here can help us to explain the patient to relax. So you can see that the current parameter is uh, a little less than, than it is necessary. Uh -huh. so. so our training uh, is uh, not easy. Right now, so um, I think that we uh, they finish with this training, alpha training. But of course, we should to uh, perform to to uh, do this training uh, uh, for twenty minutes, and uh, I think that uh, we don't apply the theta training uh, and because it's more complicated and they can see that 
alpha tonic is not very easy for our patient, but I think it's it's normal uh, when the person only start to learn himself to regulate his brain or mind. So. So yes, he understand, but he can't manage, can't maintain it. Okay, I can we can stop training, and uh, they can see uh, that now uh, uh, we should to go to the theater. If uh, and we perform uh, this training for um, 10 minutes too, uh, for relaxation. Uh, but I think this uh, training in our case would be unsuccessful. Uh, so, uh, as I said, the first training uh, is difficult, but uh, uh, in one, two, three training, then the person understands how he can manage, how he can change his activity. Uh, this uh, training would be more uh, efficacy and more easier for, uh, for, for patients. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, the, um, our training. Uh, we can uh, finish this training uh, and as, as I said, it was a relaxation training and after training we can access the um, uh, activity of our activity. It was the efficacy of our training, alpha training. It was efficacy of EMG training. Yes, and we see that the EMG electromyography amplitude is reduced during our sessions. In and here we can see the uh, alpha training rhythm, alpha rhythm, power spectrum of alpha, and of course uh, the, uh, the level of power spectrum of alpha activity during training um, is um, not increased in comparison with the background recording, yes. So uh, we can conclude that it was not successful in our case. Uh, but uh, the theory, theory may uh, decrease a little during the sessions. Uh, so uh, now we can try an hour. So we can stop. Uh, and uh, so our patient has some break. And uh, now we can start an hour. Our training, uh, it would be um, um, the training of um, uh, that better training, uh, the training which we applied for um, person with four patients with uh, the attention deficit hyperactivity disorders. Uh, so as I said, this training has uh, different uh, different um, variation modifications and um, and different is training all this activation training by different biofeedback parameters I applied. In our case, we will for neurofeedback, we will use the ratio better and fatter. And as I said, uh, the person with ADHD they have uh, excessive act fat activity in frontal region, in frontal and central region. And so very important for them to, to enhance the bad activity and decrease the that activity. So in our training, it would be uh, important to increase this ratio, increase to increase bad and decrease that activity. Uh, so uh, the duration which we, we would be used would be uh, CZ point. Uh, so I should to change them the cable, yes. Can we connect CZ point, CZ, the cable from this CZ point to our system? So, uh, thank you. Let's see, have, have, has done it. And now, um, I will, the task for our patient would be to find the uh, active focusing state. So you will see on your screen, so you can see the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the our patient uh, see the monitor and as a biofeedback, um, biofeedback 
uh, we uh, are going to use a game. We have different bar feedback, but in our case, we will uh, use this feedback. And the task uh, would be to, uh, to make fish swim. So uh, to do it, you should to find this uh, state, you try to self-regulate uh, your state uh, by receiving this feedback. So you should to find the state, then this fish move. So you try to concentrate on it, okay? So um, before our training, uh, we should to um, change our um, screen and um, we can add uh, then better index. And um, uh, so, and we can uh, to remove the alpha, trends because we don't use these trends in our uh, training. Okay, so we can see that the better training is recalculated. Um, and we see that uh, in our training, our patient during the alpha training, our patient uh, was uh, less concentrated. So what is value our alpha training was, um, was um, um, unsuccessful in this. So we have a low beta um, on the ground and we have a high beta on them. Then we use the relaxation training. So it means that for our patients very important to so don't teach them to relax. But now I'm sure that uh, this training, uh, that better training would be very easy for them, for him. So, uh, and in the, um, now we should to, at the beginning of our session, we should repeat uh, EMG training, EMG down training, but we, uh, we have so it. Uh, so we start with the uh, better training. And we start with the calculation of um, the better training threshold. So I ask patients to relax, but don't close your eyes. And now we are going to uh, EG recording. So it's very necessary for us to stop and to check the impedance. So that's okay because we changed the electrode. So. so we see the EMG artifact here. So we ask the patient um, to relax a little. Don't close your eyes. So the injective practice is very high. Oh, so he injected EG. Try, don't try. Are uh, not to move. So we need uh, some time to, I think we need to perform immediate training here to calm our patient down. Uh, so we'll try, we, I think we will start with it. Uh, so, no, the G amplitude is decreased. So we cut. I can't put Maybe you can put your hand, hand on the chair. Okay. Okay. Oh, I think it's better. It's more important that the patient was in the comfortable position. And uh, uh, do you see the monitor on these positions? So, uh, now we should to assess the um, button indexes are here. And uh, so, and that rhythm. So I think that we can start with reason. 
um, this, this parameter for training and uh, during this training, we can change it. So I read it. So the task is uh, to make it swim. So I can start. Sometimes for patient would be uh, very good to see the percent of the successfulness of his result. Okay, we have music and our fish swim. So we can change this parameter. Oh no, it's not very successful, but he tried to find this state of, of rain. So the task for you is concentrated to this outreach. And to find this state. Uh, so we can see that the successfulness is uh, increased. Of course, it's very important for this training that uh, nobody talk. <laughs> uh, During this training, the person is in active, in active state, and uh, very important sometimes to give him a little break. So uh, this uh, session uh, very often uh, is divided into three, five runs. And at the beginning of the session, so the first run uh, lasts um, two, three minutes. Okay. We see that our uh, that our patient he uh, manages with this task. Yes, and he we see that his current value uh, is uh, uh, in the higher than which is needed for our uh, task. So we can suggest that it's easier for them to concentrate and relax. And we commanded him to perform some relaxation while he's back. <laughs> mm. uh, so he laughed and so his current parameters decreased. So we can uh, so our training, uh, we can give some um, break for our patient. That's okay. So, uh, and we see about that the better indexes during our training increasing compared, compared with the background activity. So uh, this is training was uh, more successful than alpha training. So if we can conclude that alpha training was not successful, but better training was successful in our case. Uh, so we give the person uh, some break. And when we can change feedback, the visual feedback to them, mm -hmm. and we can use some, um, I don't know, the, for example, um, mm, Puzzle slideshow. It's uh, this uh, feedback is more difficult, really more difficult. And he, we will suggest our patient to do this training. Uh, so now we will see the puzzle, and your your task uh, would be to open uh, these uh, puzzles and uh, to become this picture visible for us. Uh, so, and the task for you is self-regulate and to concentrate to read, to this, uh, to this uh, feedback. So, mm, okay. 
Awesome, we can start again. Uh, so, uh, at the beginning, the patient showed to find these conditions. And uh, so, um, then uh, when he, uh, the threshold would be uh, in this range, more than, uh, and the current training successful would be more than 30%. Uh, there's some part of our um, of our picture uh, because they're visible. So as I said, it's uh, a little hard. It's a little difficult. It's difficult for patient in compare with the uh, fish, for example. So, but he managed his feet very quick and. Try again. Uh, I should said that um, some uh, in some article described that the better training sometimes uh, has uh, a little uh, side effect uh, as a headache. And so sometimes after the better training, uh, relaxation training is recommended, MG relaxation training is recommended. Um, so uh, he finished, yeah? This is the second picture. Yeah? Yes. So uh, for this training, the as a feedback, we can use different type of feedback and I would say, we'll show you uh, that our neuron spectra have uh, a different type of feedback. And of course, it's very important that feedback um, should be interesting for our patients. So for, for children, they can use some, um, some games, uh, maybe um, some cartoons, uh, movies, uh, slideshow, we can use the adult. And so I think, uh, as I said, this training lasts should uh, be uh, last um, um, 10 minutes. Um, this run should be uh, 10 minutes and all session lasts usually 30 minutes. And then, so I can, we can stop our training. I think it's clear. And now we can give the patient to the last. It's very good, it's very successful, uh, better training. Uh, so, and we can record there some um, uh, background EG, EMG activity after training. Uh, so we see that the EMG activity reduce. And uh, so we, we can, after several minutes, or we can, we can see the, uh, the volume of bad activity on our trends, uh, but we can compare uh, the better volume during the background here, background, and here was background training, and we see that their bet activity uh, increased during the training. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, after the, our, our training is uh, finished, again, stop our recording, they can create the report. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, I select now a type of report here. So they can use in our report. We have different report for in our, our software. And uh, so, we use report templates when we need a template for your feedback. Okay, here. Yeah. And here we see them uh, some information which we put. Uh, we successful our training. And uh, we can um, copy these um, trends to our report. Uh, so we have to report. And uh, 
so we can close this. Uh, so now I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm nervous a little. So we can copy uh, these uh, trends to our report. Um, so, and so we can type some information to our report too. So of course we can print this report. And after we perform the second and third session, we can compare our result. Uh, they have this information, uh, which we can see after the training. So here we can see successfulness of our training and the value of that and the volume of all EG tracking, G training, and we can uh, so print some information to our report. So I think uh, we can finish. And